Somehow was the, the thing that led me to think out these notions and to, yeah, and to realize some nice stuff. Okay, so my motivation was to really understand the global counterpart of um, character, characteristic classes for uh, Lie algebra. Okay, so I wanted to understand characteristic classes for Lie groupoids associated to a representation. So these characteristic classes for Lie algebra, I found them in a paper of Marius and then of Rui, and then uh, they did something together, and I somehow didn't understand very well, so I wanted to see what was going on. Okay, so motivation. Characteristic classes for group point. Okay, so you start with a representation of a Lie group point over M, source and target. Okay, and what you want to construct is some invariants, some characteristic classes that they live on the group point cohomology of G. Okay, just to set the notation and just a quick reminder. So remember that here, so how do I compute this one? Well, the cochain complex will be given by smooth functions from the set of the arrows of G, you are, okay, so here, these are like decomposable arrows, so J1, J2, Gp. Here I will use this notation. These are the Okay, and then what happened is that, okay, so if you have a representation, what you, well, this, this representation is encoded in a Lie group point morphism from G GLE, right? So E is a vector bundle over, uh, over M, so this is. And these are just linear isomorphisms of the fiber. Okay, so from here, I mean, you see that this somehow this is contravariant, right? So what you get is a map, if this representation is encoded in this liquid point uh, morphism, then what you get is a map from uh, the cochain complex of GLE to the cochain complex of G. Okay? On the other hand, well, GLE is uh, transitive, okay? So what happened is that because GLE is transitive, then the inclusion of the iso any isotropy group, okay? So here N will be the rank of E. So the inclusion of any isotropic group, which I can identify with GLN, okay, um, this is a Morita equivalent, okay? And we know that Morita equivalences, they induce an, uh, uh, an um, uh, isomorphisms in cohomology, 
Okay, so what I get is that, well, this is an isomorphism uh, in, in, in cohomology. Okay, this R is just the, the restriction, I mean, it's just the pullback of this one. Okay, so <coughs> at the end of the day, I will have. This, this picture, so I have here right? And we know that when we pass to cohomology, well this is an ISO. So uh, uh, the characteristic classes of uh, uh, of this representation will be just the image, right here, of the of the generators of this cohomology. Okay, so it's pretty simple. But the problem is that I really wanted to have formulas. Okay, I really wanted to compute things, and I didn't like somehow like make choices on the trivialization of A and so on, so I could have like an inverse here, okay? So, my problem was this one. So, define them at cochain level. And here the problem was that this R was going in the wrong dire direction. Okay. okay, so what I will explain now, you can for forget all this motivation is, um, it's at the end, well I will introduce some notions, some uh, questions, I have more questions that uh, results because this is an ongoing project. It's uh, in a very early st stage, but I have some partial results. I have some nice notions and many questions. Okay, so, uh, okay. so, so, right, so, so, so this led me to like think like more in general, what can I do to, <laughs> to have this inverse, and then let me do some other things. Okay, so um, now let, let's, let's start again. So cohomology of G, of a Lie group with G, relative to a Lie subgroup point K over M. So once and for all, this is a subgroup with OBG, which is white. Okay. Okay. So let me find this cohomology. So, so I want to give you the the complex, the Cochin complex, and this will actually be a subcomplex of the Cochin complex of G. Okay. Okay, so okay, so to define this subcomplex, let's consider these p plus one g actions. So these are the actions of g. This acts on the space of p composable arrows, okay, and the anchor map will be, so this, this is the E action, let's say, and I, I, I action, and then, um, so the anchor is given, so if I have here the I arrow, then the anchor is this point. Let me check. 
Okay, so the definition is this one. So A axon G1 GP by this formula. So if uh, I is equal to zero, then this acts like this. If I it's bigger than zero and smaller or equal to A or smaller than P, then what I do is the GI A A minus one GI plus one and so on. Here I don't do anything. And the last one, well, um, GP times A. Okay. So, uh, well, actually, so I first saw these type of actions when I was uh, working with Eckhart in our uh, paper of Banes integration and differentiation maps, but he also has it in the paper with Lee Blanc when they were um, describing the Banes map. And uh, recently I saw this action also in a book of um, I think it's his name, for the case of Lie groups, okay? Okay, so um, the subcomplex, right, which will define the uh, cohomology relative to K, is given by, by this, so these are just cochains of G, that are invariant with respect to, respect to all P plus one actions when you restrict them to K. In the case of uh, groups, uh, w w what does it mean? This, if if you if you do this, yeah. So, you, do you want to say? I, I will oh, say. Okay, yes. sorry, <laughs> sorry for. No, but no, no, no. <laughs> okay. So, um, so so a side note is that actually, <laughs> and it goes to this direction. Actually, when I was trying to compute generators of the cohomology of GLN. Okay, at the Kochni level, I realized that I could choose them line in this. So, so, so these generators, some generators, lie here in the uh, uh, Cochin complex of GLN relative to UN. Okay. And this is a reflection of a more general uh, result. Okay, you realize here that uh, UN is compact. Okay, so so um, so let me explain what is going on here. Okay, so now um, to explain this, let's let's assume now that uh, your subgroup is proper. So when I have a number group point, there are some special uh, hard measures, like these proper or normalized hard measures. I won't go into the details of that, but what is important here is that when I, uh, with these normalized hard measures, they allow me to integrate on each D fiber in a smooth way and in a left invariant way, okay? So, um, okay, so, so here I have like there exist normalized or high systems, I think it's the name. You can look at a paper of Joao and, and Marius, they talk about this. Okay, so these are like uh, measures or densities, right? Okay. 
on each of the fibers so that they vary smoothly and in a left invariant way. Okay? But what I say here is that I'm interested in just uh, like uh, integrating. Okay? So one example is if, if you take K, K is a compact G group, then there is a canonical one, which is the normalized Uh, the invariant hard measure. Okay. So, <clears throat> if um, in this case, you, you see I have these actions, okay? What I can do is that I can take the averaging with respect to each of the actions using a uh, normalized car system on uh, A. Okay. So, so here, uh, and this also shows up in the paper with, uh, with A car for the groups, but it works here also. Okay. And I don't know if I, is it okay if I, so this is integration is given by integration. No, let me write down the formula. So you apply it to G1 up to GP, and this is just integration. Act. Right? And then you integrate over A, A varying on the T fiber inside of G. Okay. So what I get here then is that okay, composing all these averagings. I will get a map from G to the complex, to the relative complex. Right, so this is up, which is composition. It doesn't uh, matter like the order here because these are uh, commuting actions. You can, well, it's easy to see, but these are commuting actions. Okay. So, um, and this actually, you can also make this calculation, it's a, it's a map of uh, complexes. Okay, so, so this led me to the fir first question. <laughs> and I think it's one of my main questions which is, okay, so if you are in this setting, I have this map averaging, and then I have the inclusion, right? Of course, you will have the inclusion composition with averaging is the identity, okay? And my question is that if these are homotopy inverses, And my guess is yes, okay? And well, uh, uh, very related to what you ask, um, actually after like <laughs> thinking about this, I realized that Richard Depp in his book. Wait, this is for any K? For any K proper, yes. So Richard Beck in his book proves that uh, when you have the groups, in this case uh, proper means compact, K compact, then 
the inclusion is a homotopy equivalent. And the homotopy inverse, to construct it, it uses this averaging. Okay? And the homotopy inverse, inverse uses Okay. It does not have to be connected. No. I mean, these connected assumptions would go when you look at the infinitesimal convert okay. Maria, uh, there are important cases when uh, you can actually define the quotient no, of a G by K. Uh, for instance, when you have a more intermorphism yes. or this is one very natural question, yes. And then uh, I, I mean, I, I, haven't lo I, I have the idea to look at that, what does it mean? I mean, like, how, if you relate this cohomology with some cohomology on, the, on these quotients, yeah. right? I, I think there is a, a, an identification of the, of the question. Probably, some invariant. Yeah. Some, yeah. When you consider a relative Duran cohomology, Usually, there's a relation to the cohomology of the sub-object. In this case, is there is there a relationship between C G K and C K? C G K and C K, probably. <laughs> okay, but it's not it's not somehow uh, so. Uh, yeah, somehow. I mean it's. I I I think these are like. For instance, when I was talking to Daniel preparing this talk, there should be, when k is, for instance, regular, there should be some uh, connection with the cohomology of the foliation. I mean, there are all these questions. Also, with the cohomology of k, maybe it goes into an exact sequence. Yeah, that, that's what I'm asking. Is that normally, when we call a cohomology theory, uh, you know, relative, it's because it's in a, it's, you have excision, right? But this is somehow different. It's not exactly of that type. I don't know. I see. Okay. Um, but I, I will, I will come back to this later on. Okay. So, so I have the hint of each other, which was good because I already, I mean. Uh, uh, but I will come back to this question uh, later, to uh, also to solve it in a more general case, not only for lead group. Okay, so let me have a look at some other case. So I was looking at this case when k is proper. So let's see what happens when when k is transitive. Okay, so the thing is here, you, we know that for transitive groupoids, the cohomology of the groupoid is equivalent to the cohomology of the isotopies, right? Because it's a equivalent, blah, blah, blah. Now, when you go relative, this also works, okay? And let me explain uh, how. <laughs> so, let's fix a point on M. Right? And then, okay, so I have this restriction that goes from the uh, complex of the, on the group points to the complex of the isotropy Lie groups. Here I'm not assuming transitive, okay? I just have a list of group points. The restriction. The nice thing here is that when you go relative, you have an inverse on the nose. Okay? So you have an extension, you can extend. And here you really use that case transitive. So uh, let me just write. And well, it, it's very natural. If you think a little bit of the definition, it's just really extended, extending the, the, 
the functions here. So if you take a, 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 a cochain here, what you do is, okay, so I have my arrows, right? So I want to uh, apply this to decompose our arrows. And I have my point M here. And what I can do is, okay, since K is transitive, I can join all these same points to M with, uh, with the elements of K. <coughs> Okay, so here the definition of this extension is that I do F and then, well, there is only one way to do this. And so on. You see that now these elements lie on the isotropies, right? And um, what happened is that well, this is well defined. This will not depend on the choices of k's because f was already km uh, K, K invariant. Okay. So <laughs> this is nice. And well, let me call this a proposition. I don't know if it's a proposition. It's like a direct consequence, right? So these cohomologies are the same. So um, another nice thing, because uh, look, so um, uh, so so yes, yeah, so 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 okay. So now let me try to put these two things together. So transitive and proper. Okay, so one thing that also I somehow was <laughs> really um, thinking about is, is, okay, so if I fix, so a point, right? So I have the isotropies at this point, and then um, with the isotropies, right? So with the isotropy of K, well, I have the, that this is a compact group, so I have a, the normalized beam, beam variant uh, measure, hard measure, and then I was wondering if I could like somehow have some hard system to put some uh, normalized hard system on K so that these averagings are related, okay? So, so let me write down the diagram and then I explain. So here I have the restriction, right? So here, now I can take this averaging with respect to the to the to all the actions of KP K, K uh, M. But now here, well, I should I, I have a, a, a one that, that I like, which is with respect to the normalized hard uh, normalized by invariant hard measure on K, Km, right? Now I have also this restriction. And I was wondering if I could have a hard system, so a way to integrate on K, normalized hard system, on the T fibers, so that I can complete this diagram, okay? And the answer is yes. So there exists a normalized hard system, mu m, okay. Okay, and well, what I did was to look at the paper of Marius and, and Joao, and there they explain 
that when you have a regular and proper groupoid, then the hard system, so the measures on the fibers, are induced by a collection of hard measures or densities on the orbits. Okay? You can check at the details anyway in their paper. But here we are in the transitive case. So what I'm saying is that a hard system on K is given by a hard measure or density on M. Okay? And just for the purpose of having a, a, a formula, so um, um, so or some explanation. Is that um, the, um, in this transitive case, the hard normalized, normalized uh, transitive plus proper case, hard um, system is determined. By a measure or density on M. Okay, and um, so so this remember that this is a collection or the, of densities or me, uh, or measures on the T fibers of K. Okay, so just to give you the the formula. So if I have a a function on K, how does these uh, densities or measures work well. This is by definition. You integrate. I will explain here what this means. So this is the normalized. Uh, be by invariant hard measure on this compactly group. Okay? And I'm varying K on this compactly group. And H will be any uh, arrow on K that joins. Sorry, here I think. Let me change this notation. I will fix another point here, okay? Z. So now M is, is firing, okay? Um, and so, so here I'm saying that uh, these measures are determined by a measure on M or density, and here I will take the delta Dirac. Uh, Distribution at Z. Okay? When you take the delta Iraq distribution, you will get a normalized hard system, and it works like this. So, how you integrate on the T uh, fibers, so you do this, right? So, here K is varying uh, in this isotropy, and H is any arrow that joins. Z, which is fixed, to M. Okay? This doesn't depend on the choice of H because somehow this is by invariant. Okay, so this works, it's nice. It's something uh, like a side remark. Um, okay, so, so now let, let me go back to the, to, the, to the question. Where was it? To the question. Okay, and let me show you how this is somehow in this proper and transitive case. The answer is also affirmative, and I think it's just like a very, very, at this point, is just like follow the flow. <laughs> so, so here, so the question, right? So here I have. The relative cohomology of the groupoids. Okay, now we know that 
we have restriction and extension to the cohomology of the uh, isotropies, the relative cohomology of the isotropies. Okay? Now, because K is proper, this uh, is a compactly group, so I can already apply the, the result of Ishard death, which tells me that this is computing the cohomology of the isotropy. Okay? And on the other hand, because K, I'm assuming that K is transitive, so G has to be transitive as well. Okay? So the cohomology of, the, of G is the same as the cohomology of the isotropy. Right? This is because they are more equivalent. Okay, so now this is true, right? But let me point out here also that somehow from my motivation I really wanted to construct an inverse, an explicit inverse here, right? And I didn't find a canonical choice. There are some formulas if you use local coordinates, okay? But if you go relative, you solve the problem. Okay, and here I'm really using to have this extension, I'm really using that I'm in the relative cohomology and that K is transitive. Okay, so any question? How much do I have? Well, we have uh, 15 minutes. Okay. I mean, this is reminiscent of Morita equivalence. Is there some Morita equivalence going on? I didn't have to go to Morita equivalence, probably. I mean, right, so I'm using here that this is Morita equivalence. But to have this one, I didn't yeah. have to use Morita equivalence. I, I understand, but is there some statement you can make about relative cohomology and Morita equivalence? Uh, I, like, if you, like, For instance, this is true. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Like here, I didn't have to use Morita equivalence. I mean, like maybe. But like, you understand the main point of that. So the thing on the left is that you have an inverse canonically. Yeah. Yes. Which is more than Morita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still. This is this is this I don't even use that this is trans uh, this this is Morita equivalent. It's like that G is Morita equivalent to G Z. I I didn't use that. Okay, this is only transitivity. But now I'm I'm, sh I'm showing you a proof somehow of my question in this case, which is a partial answer, right? Because here I have I don't have the averaging at the moment. But what I'm saying is that somehow these two these two cohomologies are the same. Also, this is like some implication of this diagram. Okay. Um, uh, just to uh, see if I'm understanding. They are, this is, what is the result? This is an isomorphism when K is transitive and proper. Yes. So when K, here is when K is transitive, you have that these two cohomologies are the same, okay? Now, if you put... If K is transitive, G is also is, no? If... Actually, yes, I didn't even have to... Yeah, uh, here, the only thing about proper that I use Right? Is that the isotropies are compact. Okay? So that I can that I can use the, the result of Gishard death to relate this cohomology to this one, right? Which is an isomorphism. This is the only part where I use proper. So this is an isomorphism between the relative cohomology and the cohomology of Gisher, no? Yes. Because this is reminiscent from what uh, Marco was saying of a 
let's say, some sort of long exact sequence, no? Relating yes, yes, the, right. the cohomology, the cohomology, and the cohomology of K that would vanish. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let me. Oh, yeah. Since I missed that part, so do you have that isomorphism in cohomology also in the non-transitive case? What? Uh, this averaging. Well, as I understand, you have averaging, but the question is whether that's an isomorphism in cohomology. Yes, uh, this is one of my main questions, right? So, so far, I didn't manage to, to prove it. I think, so I feel that I have the ingredients, <laughs> right? And it should, somehow, I think it's also, we could uh, apply what we did with uh, Eckhart to have, like, this perturbation lemma to get the averaging somehow, okay? But, uh, but yeah, so, so far, my computations are like very long, I don't know. Okay, but in this case, it's really, I mean, I, I put like several things together. What else? Another question? So let me come back to the, to the characteristic classes. So we know that there are representation is given by uh, by a linear polymorphism, right? So so far, as I explained there, um, I have this map, right? This is this goes to a restriction to the isotropy, which I will identify as GLN when n is the rank of of E, and well, here is the pullback of the of the representation. Okay, and we know that when we go to cohomology, I can invert this map, and well, I have this right. And somehow, I really wanted to have in the in the right direction, so the maps at the Cauchy level. Okay, so what I can do is the following. I know there will be some choices, but in any case. So what I can do is, okay, you choose some Hermitian metric H on E. And then you can consider um, this Lie subalgebroid of uh, GLE, which are just the, uh, so, right, so the uh, linear isomorphisms that fix the metric. So these are the isometries, okay? The nice thing here is that, well, this Lie subgroupoid is transitive and proper. Okay. And, uh, okay, so, um, so um, now what I can, well, the, the next thing I do is that I choose a point. Right? So to look at the isotropies and fix a point. And then, uh, where should I? Isotropy, so I can identify the isotropy at M as I always did with GLE, with GLN, and under this identification, the isotropy of this subgroupoid is 
you win. Okay, so what I will have here is the following. So I have the relative cohomology of the isotropies. I have this extension map that goes to the relative complex of GLE relative to GLE H. I have the inclusion right to GLE and then I have the pullback to the coaching complex of G. So, so look that now I, I could have an explicit description of the characteristic classes, right? Because as I said before, so this is isomorphic and there should be some averaging, right? I, somehow the averaging doesn't enter the picture, but I will write it down. Uh, the cohomology of GLN, here I have this restriction. Right? And this is the cohomology of GLE, which I think is isomorphic to this one, also with the average. Right? And um, well, I have this one. So this solves my problem. Okay? And I already, as I told you, you can explicitly compute the well it's not difficult to well it's not a non-trivial computation to show that you can you can choose the generators lying already here of this cohomology. Okay. And of course, there is the infinites infinitesimal version of all this story. Okay, so you can think of the, you can try to guess what it means uh, uh, relative cohomology for algebraids. So this is not <laughs> very obvious because, I mean, there is the there is the, um, the version for the algebra, which is kind of well known, which is the, when you have a Lie subalgebra of a Lie algebra, you have the like Eilenberg basic subcomplex, right? And, and the question is if you can have like a, a version for algebraids, okay, in this more general setting. And the problem here is that the definition for the algebra is not so easy to, is, I mean, there is not a straightforward generalization because you don't have an adjoint action or an adjoint action, okay? But my guess is that you can try to, you can try to, to guess it, right? Looking first at the integrable case, Right? Because you already have the notion for Ligu point, and then try to guess it by going with the Vanes map. And the Vanes map described by Ecker and Leblanc, it already uses the infinitesimal action, this infinitesimal, the infinitesimal generators of the of the action. Okay, of the action that I was defined, that I was using to define the relative cohomology. Okay? And of course, there is the question of extension and averaging. What does it mean for the uh, Lie algebra case once I have a good notion for Lie algebra, algebra? So I think I can. Can we say something? <laughs> so if you, if you apply Vanest, well, here you will have something that I don't know how to define, okay? This relative thing. But if you apply but here, you will get the relative, uh, the, the basic subcomplex, okay? Here, I don't know. Here, we know. Here, we know. And I think what you will get is the uh, Lie algebra, the characteristic classes of Lie algebraids associated to a representation. Okay. 
Any other questions? Well, I think Anton was first. Anton, yeah, I, I got a little bit lost. Like uh, you say, you're not using compactness or you're using compactness. So here, when you choose a metric, don't you introduce in some way the compactness in the game? Compactness? No, the, the thing is that <coughs> what I'm getting here is that this mm -hmm. subgroup for this block. Mm -hmm. So there, where compactness enters in, in just realizing that this uh, least group with this problem. Yeah, no, but for instance, the, uh, okay, again, I, I don't know, right, maybe uh, what, what I'm asking is too naive, but like the, the set of isometries, right, it's the source for a compact group between EX and TY. Is it the compactness that in the end would give you, well, I just, like, uh, maybe, maybe what, what I'm wondering, you're saying, okay, there are some arguments which use averages, there are some other arguments that do not use averages. Yes, I... Do they, I but, but in the end, do they, or, or, or do they not? Here, I didn't use... Uh, so, for my, <laughs> for my application, I didn't use average. It was just, like, looking at the, the things that I was getting, and that some natural que questions uh, pop out, mm -hmm. like averaging, okay? But here, for my problem, I didn't use it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand when you say define a relatively algebraic homology, so going infinitesimally. I see there is a problem with the action, but the action would be on horizontal elements. So when you caution out and you go to horizontal, usually the problem with the action disappears. Mm -hmm. So like uh, if K was the big A algebraic, you see, there is no adjoint action of an R and A, but horizontal means zero, from which there is obvious action. So I'm a bit surprised that for relative cohomology, that the lack of adjoint action plays a role. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I mean, I. And also, your your subalgebra is going to be wide. Yes, my algebra are going to be wide. Uh, but I don't know how this really, but... Uh, well, it's more to his point. And an another comment is like, you, there is this game that you can play for Lie groups, right? You have the Vaness map comparing differentiable cohomology of a Lie group with that of the Lie algebra. No interest on compact subgroups. But you are interested in understanding, well, I'm, I'm proposing a game, right? You're trying to understand how much this fails to be an isomorphism. And here you make this remark, well, if I have a compact subgroup, the relative cohomology or the level of groupoid doesn't change, but the Lie algebra changes. So the map I want to be an isomorphism factors through the relative Lie algebra cohomology. So I have to take that into account, even if I'm not interested in the relative. And then, of course, the best choice is the maximal compact subgroup. And that's when things will become isomorphism. Mm -hmm. So here the natural question then is, well, playing this game, what would be the analog of the maximal compact subgroupoid, the maximal proper subgroupoid? Is there any chance? I, mean, I see it happening in the transitive, but in general, did you look at some examples of non-regular, let's say? Uh, I think that's where the problem... Uh, no, I didn't look at any example. Um, but yes, uh, these, question, these questions, I mean, they are very natural ideas that... Well, if you have one which is maximal, is the differentiable cohomology of G isomorphic to the relative Lie algebraic cohomology? So, so we have for Lie groups, as you were saying, maybe you, probably you already know that, but we have, a, we have a result with Eckhart. So the result is that, okay, so you can, you have here, um, a Lie group, you can take the averaging is that at that moment, well, you will get, you, you can choose any compact, okay? Any compact, you can take the averaging, and then you have Banest, which is an easy comp computation to show that this goes to the basic complex, right? Here I will take 
just K because I'm not assuming that G is connected, but in any case, basically. Okay, so there, when... There is the, the relative one. It's one, the more, image, the image one more K next to G. Yeah, right. So, so uh, when uh, G has finally co many connected comp components and K is maximal, as you were saying, this is an isomorphism. Okay, which implies that this is an isomorphism because I already know that averaging is an isomorphism. Okay, so actually, yes, this is interesting. I mean, you have this Van Est, which goes to relative to relative, and you can ask, okay, here, when is this an isomorphism in this, in this more general case, right? Also, like this, this work with Eckhart, with taking this averaging, we didn't put this, this thing here, but we talked about averaging, and it made me think about uh, this problem. Another one. Yeah, I have a question related to, to what Maris was saying, but it's uh, regarding the special types of case, no? and one very special type is a smooth, wide, indiscreet, uh, normal <laughs> sub subgroups, uh, like uh, the kernels of maps of Lie groupoids that uh, yield an isomorphism between the Lie algebras. Mm. This is like a totally indiscreet, it's the opposite of transitive, no? mm -hmm. and on each uh, uh, and on each isotropy is a discrete and, and, and normal. So uh, I was wondering uh, uh, whether in, in this case the, the relative, because you can perform the, the, the quotient and you get another Lie groupoid that has the same real algebra. And I was wondering whether if the. Since in the, this case, the affiliation is just points, right? By, the affiliation by K. By yes. not or necessarily by, by G. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I as I was mentioning, um, and also like hinting out what uh, Marco was saying, that there should be some relation with the cohomology, the relative cohomology, and the cohomology of the foliation induced by K. So in this case, the foliation is just points, right? Yeah. So. Uh, Maybe, yes, I don't know. I mean, these are all very natural questions. But thank you for giving me more questions to think about it. Very nice. Okay, there are no more questions. Let's thank the speaker again.